Hey, friends all over the world. I'm looking a little scruffy, but I want to tell you the truth behind Beyonce's Church Girl song, this controversial song that Beyonce just released called Church Girl. As of this video, it already has about 3.4 million views on the song. And I want to tell you the shocking truth behind it. In fact, there's a lot of people talking about it. There's a lot of uh, Christians and gospel artists talking about it. One of the reasons why it's, it's a topic of discussion is not just the title of the song, but it's the fact that she sampled gospel music. I don't know if it's the Clark sisters, but she sampled gospel music in the song. She's actually singing the lyrics to this song over gospel music. And so this has created this huge firestorm in the music world, in the gospel world, uh, you know, questions about sampling and all of this kinds of stuff. But I want to tell you a truth about this that many of you have not thought about. In fact, one gospel artist just came out and talked about the fact that gospel musicians sample secular music all the time. And so it's nothing wrong with Beyonce sampling a gospel music. If if gospel artists can sample secular music, then why can't secular artists sample gospel music? You know, that was the argument that was made. But here's the truth. And you're not going to like what I'm about to say, but here's the absolute truth. In fact, I had never heard the song. I never heard the song until I heard a Christian artist talking about it. I never heard the song because I don't listen to Beyonce. In fact, that raises a question. Why are we listening to her anyway as Christians? Why are Christians listening to Beyonce to begin with? Why are Christians listening to Beyonce? That's one question. The other question is, so I went and I said, let me, let me listen to the words. And so she's talking about, she starts the song by talking about how you know, many of my friends have cried and go the hard time. And then the song goes into a vulgar, perverse rant about being a church girl, being a thought on the dance floor, mother effers, and, and I'm about to use my body, and, and I'm about to go to the club, and it's about to go down, and it's about all this kinds of stuff. Here's the truth that we don't want to hear. The reason why this song, Church Girl, has not really caused the outrage that it should is because in many ways it's true. We do have Christian thoughts. And thought, T-H-O-T, is an acronym that stands for that hoe over there. That's what it stands for. Thought is an acronym is an acronym, that hoe over there. And the song is about her being a church girl and a whore at the same time. It's, it, 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 is, it is a representation. It is an archetype being represented in the song of a female that grew up in the church but she's loose. In fact, it says it in the song, we're about to get loose. Church girls, get loose. Get loose, get loose, get loose. Thotty, 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 thotty. <laughs> right, so here it is. Here it is. It is a song representing the fact that church girls are wild, promiscuous, perverse, lustful, ungodly, hypocritical. And the fact that, that many church girls listen to Beyonce is evidence that this song has a form of justification. See, it doesn't, it's sacrilegious, it's blasphemous, it's perverse, but here's the reality. It is a representation of a subculture inside our uh, uh, churches where there are, because the church has not embraced holiness, the church has not embraced righteousness, the church has not embraced truth. Beyonce is a church girl who became a whore, who became a loose woman, who became perverse. 
And so it is her story. It is her uh, a testimony being represented in that song. It is so blasphemous and so ungodly and so wicked. But because the compromise has entered the church, it doesn't even bother folks anymore. You got gospel artists arguing for the song. You know why? Because of the level of compromise in the body of Christ, the level of Jezebelic activity in the church. That's why we don't, that's why we're not outraged about the song, because that, that promiscuous spirit is in the church. That spirit of perversion is in the church. That spirit of Jezebel is in the church. Folks getting pregnant in the church. People fornicating in the church. People having adulterous affairs in the church. And that's why the song don't bother people. That's why the song that should bother us and should disturb us and we should be weeping over the fact that this woman is lost and on her way to hell, but because she's on our playlist, good God Almighty, woo, Jesus, because she's on the first lady's playlist, not my first lady, but she's on many first ladies' playlist. Yeah, yeah, because you listen to her in the bedroom with your spouse, so you can't rebuke somebody that you make love to. You can't, that's why we're not, that's why we're not, that's why we're not speaking out about it. That's why folks ain't saying nothing about Beyonce, because they are Beyonce. Good Lord have mercy. Good Lord have mercy. You know why? Because the church, let me tell you something, and I, I'm telling you, I, and, 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 and I'm guilty. The church has not lived a sanctified life. We don't preach sanctification in the church. We don't teach being set apart and separated. We can't rebuke Beyonce because she's on many Christians playlist. She is. And I'm not, this is not even to attack Beyonce. This is not an attack against Beyonce. I'm talking about what her music represents. I'm talking about where her songs explicitly say that, you know, oh, I'm a church girl, but I'm a thought at the same time. I'm a whore at the same time. That's what the song is about. I'm a church girl and I'm a hoe. I'm a church girl and I'm a hoe. <clears throat> and the reason why we can't cast it, we can't criticize this is because we got Beyonce's on flyers for conferences. We have prophetesses who look and dress and behave like thoughts. Y'all don't want to say anything. I'm going to tell the truth. The devil is a liar. Yes, we do. That's why, yeah, we got church girls on the flyers. That's why ain't no outrage over this. Because the compromise is real. The mixture is real. Now, don't get mad. See, if you're getting mad in my comment section, as the old folks say, a hit dog will holler. Don't get mad. If this don't apply to you, don't get mad. Don't get mad. <laughs> don't get mad. Don't get mad. I'm telling you, <clears throat> this song is blasphemous. It's sacrilegious. It is perverse, but the reason why it has an audience is because it represents a subculture in the church that is laden with compromise, full of compromise. Paul talks about in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, he deals with temple prostitution. He says, what? Know you not that he that is joined with a harlot is one flesh? No, no, no. He that is joined to harlot is one flesh. Two saith he, 
shall be one flesh. Why does Paul say that? Because in 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and 1 Corinthians chapter 6, he's dealing with sexual immorality in the church. And he compares it to temple prostitution. Meaning that if you look at the scripture carefully, he makes a reference in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19. He says, know you not that your bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost, which you have of God and you are not your own. Why does he talk about the temple? The Greek word, naios. He talks about it because Corinth was known for its sexual immorality. Not only that, Corinth had one of the largest temples of Aphrodite in the in the Roman Empire, in the in the Greek culture, and so and so here it was. This temple of Aphrodite, the goddess of love, was said to have up to a thousand temple prostitutes, and the temple prostitutes were women that were priestesses in the temple who aided the worship of Aphrodite through sexual promiscuity. Men would come and sleep with these prostitutes to venerate the gods. And the reason why this song is so disturbing is because it praises and venerates temple prostitution. That I can be in the church, I can be in the church and still practice whoredoms. I can be in the church and still be a thought. I can be on the praise team and still be a hoe. And hoe is not gender specific. It can be male and female. Male and female. So this is the truth. This is what should shock us about the Church Girl album. Beyonce is a heathen. She grew up in the church, is backslidden, is living in sin, and we need to pray for her salvation. Good God Almighty. This is not to judge or to criticize her. But I'm talking about the reason why we can't sound the trumpet about this and rebuke that spirit in this song is because that spirit's in the church. We can't say nothing about it because she's on our playlist. We can't say anything about it because all we got to do is look at your downloads. Come on, somebody, because we got people who speak in tongues who still listen to Meg the Stallion and are thotty yaddy 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 yaddy. And that's what this song is about. It's about being a thought. That hoe over there. That's what that means. That hoe over there. That hoe over there. And there's going to be some Christians who say they love Jesus or who are going to justify, who are even going to say, man, there's nothing wrong with her sampling that song. Y'all are hypocrites for judging her. Y'all, y'all should judge her because we sample songs from secular artists. So why can't she sample the song? And you go listen to that foolishness. You know why? Because there's a spirit of Jezebel in the church. There's a spirit of Jezebel in the church who teaches and seduces the servants of God to commit fornication and to eat things offered unto idols. You know why the pastors can't stand up against this? They've been divorced and remarried so many times that they can't say anything about this. They married to a Beyonce. Their first lady is a Yonce. So they ain't going to say nothing about this. They ain't going to say nothing about this. Beyonce is their first lady. And God said something to me profound. He said to me, he said, Kenan, He said something to me. He said, Kenan, I'm not shaking the church. I said, Lord, what did you mean? The prophets are saying that the church is experiencing a shaking and the church is experiencing a great shaking and we need to be shaken. And the shaking is happening and the shaking is here. And all the prophets are saying the shaking, the shaking, the shaking. And the Lord said to me, there is nowhere in scripture that says I'm shaking my church. I need y'all to hear me by the Holy Ghost. There is nowhere in scripture that suggests that God is shaking the church. You can't find a single exposition in scripture. You cannot find a single hermeneutical justification or a single reference or cross-reference in scripture that promises any shaking of the church. God said to me, I said, okay, God, so what do you mean? He said, I'm not shaking the church, nor will I ever shake the church because the church cannot be shaken. Matthew chapter 16, verse 19 says, 
And upon this rock, I'll build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. The church can't be shaken. So I said, God, what do you mean the church can't be shaken? He says, I'm not shaking the church. I'm shaking the world. The world will be shaken, not the church. Judgment begins in the church, but the church will not be shaken. So I said, okay, if judgment begins in the church and the church will not be shaken, and you say you're shaking the world, but it seems like the church is shaking, then what's going on? He said, no, the world in the church is shaking. Good God Almighty. He said, the world in the church is shaking. I'm shaking the world. And the problem is that the world has had its footprint in the church. The world has had a footprint in the church. The world has had a presence in the church. And because the church has acted like the world and thought like the world and behaved like the world, those are the ones being shaken. Worldly believers. Because God's trying to shake the world out of us. The best way I can describe it, you ever walk on the beach and you get you get sand in your shoe? Wish I could illustrate this. You walk on the beach and you'll get sand in your shoe. Okay, this is a sandal here. Look at this sandal. So you walk on the beach, you get sand in your shoe, and this is what you do. You shake the sandal. You shake the sandal. You're not trying to shake the shoe loose. You're not trying to break the shoe. The shoe is not coming loose. The only thing that is coming loose when you do this is the sand that never should have been in there in the first place. Let me say it one more time. When I shake this sandal, the only thing coming loose is the sand that should have never been in there in the first place. Talking about church girl. Folks are dying and going to hell in a handbasket. And we sitting up here listening to church girl albums and, and Beyonce and all this stuff. And we got uh, uh, Vanessa Bell Armstrong and Bethel Worship and Hillsong and Meg the Stallion in the same playlist. And we wonder why the church, the world is not afraid of the church. See, in the first century, the world was afraid of the church. That's why they killed them and persecuted them, because they were afraid of us. They were afraid of the power that we walked in. They knew that if we preached the gospel, it would expose the kingdoms of darkness and dismantle their systems. That's why they killed Jesus. That's why they crucified the apostles. That's why they beheaded Paul the apostle. Exactly. But now there's no fear. They blaspheme us. They blaspheme our songs. They, 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 take, they, they can take a gospel song and talk about being a thought over a gospel song that's about worshiping Jesus, and they can do it without a single thought. They have no fear at all. You know why? Because they've not seen any power or real holiness in the church. Haven't seen any real power. They ain't afraid of us. Let me tell you something. A, 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 a cartoonist drew a picture of the prophet Muhammad. And it was so inflammatory that they threatened to kill this guy. And I think he may have even been killed. The Muslim world rose up to the point where people are afraid to say something about uh, Muhammad. Because Muslims practice what they preach. They mean what they say. If you talk about their deities that they worship, you're going to hear, it's going to be an uproar. They're going to, you're going to hear about it financially. You're going to hear about it politically, socially, economically. Every sphere of influence that they control is going to address the issue. Christians are the only ones that when someone blasphemes what is holy in our name, we defend that person. We defend them and Preachers and gospel singers will get up and say, don't say nothing about Beyonce. Y'all are hypocrites for criticizing her. We are the only community that is so duplicitous and double-minded that we will not stand and defend what we believe. And the reason we don't do it is because the hands aren't clean. The Bible says the wicked flee when no man pursues, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. The reason why pastors can't preach against this is because they have three baby mamas 
and side chicks. And they are, are committing adultery and fornication, unrepentant. That's why we can't say nothing about it. Because we got church girls in the church. We got church girls sitting in the pews and on the praise team. We got church girls in the choir. We got church girls on the intercessory team. Church girls. So we can't rebuke church girls when we are church girls. Oh, the, well, you got to love Beyonce. No, this has nothing to do with love. God loves Beyonce and so do I. We're talking about a blasphemous song. We ain't talking about love. And that's the problem. There is such a distortion of the grace message that we can't even correct anything without being accused of being judgmental and being accused of being condescending and unloving. We can't say anything anymore. It's as if the church has been muzzled. This song is evil. The people who wrote it are evil. The people who produce it are evil. The, 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 the writers of the song are evil. The marketers of the song are evil. That's the truth. Woe unto him that calls good evil and evil good. This ain't about Beyonce. This is about the church. This is about the church. There needs to be a separation between the wheat and the tear. There needs to be a separation between the sheep and the goat. This is not about judging anybody. I'm not judging Beyonce. I don't hate Beyonce. I'm not, I'm not wishing any ill toward Beyonce. <laughs> what I'm saying is that we need to repent as a church. All of us. You may say, well, you ain't perfect. You probably got stuff going on. I ain't never claimed to be perfect. But I, I guarantee you this. Ain't no paternity test coming up with an illegitimate child in my name. <laughs> ain't no paternity test. And there's no DNA test that will have any of my bodily fluids in somebody but my wife. So what I'm saying to you is I'm not claiming perfection. I'm not claiming uh, 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 to, 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 to be better than anybody else. What I'm saying to you is that at some point we have to uphold a standard. At some point we have to say, you know what, this is wrong. And we have to agree and have a consensus that this is blasphemy. It's blasphemous. And if you've sinned, if you've done wrong... We just need to repent. That's all. I'm not saying that ain't nobody wrong. I'm saying let's repent if we're wrong. If we're living loose and crazy, let's repent and let the blood cleanse us so that we can be everything we were created to be. This is not being condescending. It's not about judging anybody or thinking I'm better. I'm saying the Bible says, if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous, who is faithful and just, to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Just repent. Just repent. At least can we agree that wrong is wrong? Can we at least agree that the song is blasphemous? Can we at least agree that this does not glorify God? Can we agree on that? Please share this.